like we're talking prison where one third of of the apprehended are literally innocent like directly innocent the rest of it are This is the biggest prison in the world, designed to hold up to 40,000 inmates. It's a brand new high security fortress. The inmates are under constant observation, inside and outside. Up to 100 prisoners live in cramped up cells with no privacy. There's no going out, no fresh air, and no visits. This prison is located in El Salvador. For decades, the country has been terrorized by so called. Do not read the comments. Worst is my life. Everybody writing can love. The, dude, YouTube commenters love Bukele. Oh my lord. Many in this comment section are upset uh, by us bringing the Norwegian prison system into the discussion of CCOT. We cut that part from the video. We definitely did not manage to bring our point across here and failed to mention that important context. We are not comparing the economic and social situations of Norway. <gasps> no, delete a part of the video. That's so crazy. Its crime was low even before it started these policies, but El Salvador literally had enough gangsters to make armies. Norway is rich. It only has to accommodate like a few thousand prisoners at most. Ukele is based though. No more crime. Aw, oh, that sucks. I think it's perfectly valid to literally look at a country like El Salvador and look at a country like Norway and be like, this is their rehabilitative focus when it comes to their criminal justice. This is the most punitive criminal justice, uh, uh, like, tackling of criminal justice uh, that is around the planet. Maras, competing street gangs. It was notoriously one of the world's most dangerous places. Its murder rate has long been the highest on the globe. Then, I grab my its food. people elected a new president. Nayib Bukele went to war against the country's gangs. His government imprisoned 2% of the country's adult population. Many here, never to see their families again, never to be released back into society. El Salvador is much safer now in some ways. Bukele is immensely popular as a result, but up to one in three prisoners is said to be innocent. And El Salvador might have accidentally sacrificed its democracy in its fight against the Maras. This is Juan, a fictional character we base on real reports and material from the mega prison. He is 15 years old, tattooed, his parents are very poor and abandoned him when he was nine. Then he joined the Barrio 18, a major Mara gang. Now Juan is on a prisoner transport to the southeast with other suspected gang members. Three years earlier, Nayib Bukele became president of El Salvador. He's much younger than your average politician. He knows how to use social media and quickly rose to power. Fighting the Maras dominated his political career. The gangs have their origins in US cities like Los Angeles. After the young migrants were deported in the early 90s, they took control of the streets back in Central America. They've been terrorizing El Salvador for decades. Extortion, arms trafficking, and drug dealing. Maras rule entire communities and districts. They often recruit orphans and leave children in poverty with no choice, join or die. During gang wars, innocent bystanders are often caught between the fronts on the street. The Maras have attacked and set fire to buses on several occasions, even with innocent civilians inside them. In 2015, 18 people were murdered every day. El Salvador has a population of over just 6 million, which equated to over 100 murders per 100,000 inhabitants, a sad global record. As mayor of the capital, San Salvador, Bukele used mild means to fight this violence. Youth centers, streetlights, infrastructure, and education helped. Many voters like that. Now as president, he's changing his strategy. Oh yeah. He wants to rule with an iron fist. At the beginning Typical of his fake, first term in office- Fake, fake leftist, bro. Fake leftist all around, okay? Office, the murder rate in El Salvador actually falls. But it also fell before that and there are considerable doubts as to whether this was really due to his security politics. Also, Bukele is said to cooperate with the gangs. The Maras are supposed to keep a low profile and reduce the murder rate. In exchange, Bukele promises benefits for imprisoned gang members. The gangs seem to have agreed and the violence decreases. Bukele denies any such deal has been made. Either way, in 2021, the population rewards Bukele and his party with a majority in parliament and with more power.
On the 22nd of March, 2022, the government under Bukele declares a state of emergency. The reason is a wave of murders by the Maras. Ten days earlier, over 60 people fell victim to the brutal gangs in a single day. It seems like they stepped down from the supposed deal they had with Bukele. The state of emergency restricts freedom of assembly and freedom of the press. Anyone can be detained for 15 days without a warrant. The police had to meet strict arrest quotas. During the 15 days in police custody, it is decided whether somebody will remain in custody for up to two years as pretrial detention. Because of the 15 days of custody and thousands of arrested people, mass trials often decide on this pretrial detention. This system is so judges insane. decide the fate of up to 900 people at a time. Sometimes the judges are masked and remain anonymous. Anyone who ends up in pretrial detention usually spends more than a year in prison. The country's prisons became completely overcrowded. Some host three times the amount of prisoners they were built for. The conditions are brutal. Guards torture and most likely sometimes kill inmates. In the first year of this state of emergency alone, there are over 150 deaths in the prisons. Dead bodies are reportedly disposed of in mass graves, relatives not informed of the deaths. We aim to make tough subjects such as this one accessible through animation. That wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, like the truly amazing platform, Udu, an all-in-one management platform. With Udu, you can create your own website for free, whether you're an established business owner or just starting out. Udu is with you every step of the way. You don't need any skills in programming. Honestly, you can be a complete noob. Udu's website builder makes it a breeze. Just visit udu.com and answer some questions. What kind of website do you want? Which colors do you prefer? And what's your favorite design style? Udu will do its magic. Then you can make little tweaks to your liking, change headlines, replace them. If you need more space for text, you can just drag big boxes where you want them, and ta-da. You'll be online in no time, and Udu gives you a free custom domain for one year on top. If you want to go deeper, Udu offers a range of other powerful applications to optimize your business. Check out Udu now by visiting firm.deals Udu and start building your own website for free today. To free up the regular prisons and to house convicted gang members, this new mega prison is built in 2023. Gang members have officially been classified as terrorists since 2015. Accordingly, the prison is called Center for the Confinement of Terrorism, or CECOT for short. Juan arrives there now. After a good hour, the bus reaches a massive complex surrounded by a two kilometer long and 11 meter high wall. It is supposed to be able to withstand car bombs. Hundreds of soldiers from the surrounding barracks can be called up to Seacott within minutes. After the gate opens, Juan drives past high fences, watchtowers, and huge halls. The bus comes to a halt again in front of one of them. Juan has to hand over all his possessions and get x-rayed. He is given a white t-shirt and trousers. His head gets shaved. Then Juan is taken to his cell, he shares it with around 90 other prisoners. This four-story metal shelf is his only place to sit. He can use his towel as a pillow. He has to sleep on it at night, if he can. The light in the hall is on 24-7, and it is always bright as day. Juan quickly loses all sense of time. There are no windows. He can't look outside, let alone go outside. In contrast to many other prisons, there is simply no outdoor area for inmates. Escape is utterly impossible. We saw the real images from that one Mexican YouTuber who was so far up <laughs> Bukele's dick. It's, it's harrowing. It's gruesome. It is straight up. It is straight up torture. Like it, it's shit that you see on movies and, and on TV series, like it's Andor. The complex is protected by seven security. He filmed it? Yeah. Not only did he film it, he glazed it up. He literally glazed it the fuck up. They were like, oh, dude, this is so sick. I can't believe you're like torturing these guys. I love that. That's awesome. Security rings. From the cells to high electric fences, 19 watchtowers and several walls, there's gravel on the paths so that no one can move around unnoticed. Some inmates can speak to their lawyers, but only by video call. There is a special room just for that. Juan only leaves his cell to work in the workshop every day, or to take part in mandatory joint sports sessions in the middle of the hall, always under strict surveillance by security guards armed to the teeth. They watch the prisoners from every angle. 
there is no privacy. Juan shares two large wash basins and toilets with his cellmates. The gym and canteen are only for prison employees. Prisoners eat in their cells. So it's a real highlight when Mexican YouTuber Luisito Comunica comes by with his camera crew. Similarly, when Lethal Crisis gets to film there. You can find both videos in our description. They have English subtitles. Some inmates may try to send a message to the outside world while being filmed. Anyone who's caught doing that or causes disturbance is put in a solitary cell. These are concrete bunkers with a water basin, a toilet, a simple concrete bench. There is no lighting in these cells. It is pitch black. Many prisoners will spend the rest of their lives in these conditions. Prison sentences in CCOT are set to last from 20 to over 1,000 years. The inmates are cut off from the outside world, their families and friends. There are no phone calls to CCOT and no visits. Some will never see their loved ones again. Juan is expected to be released from CCOT after 15 years. That is the maximum sentence for 15-year-olds. 16 and 17-year-olds can serve up to 30 years. What plans are there for him when he gets out of prison? None. Rehabilitation is not planned. Human rights groups such as Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and Crystal Sol it's so funny that people fucking say this like, oh, what are we supposed to do? <clears throat> Give him human rights? It's like, hey, dumbass. You do realize that like a 15 year old can be swept in to this prison in a dragnet and many do. And there is no real due process. They literally have like 200 people at a time. What was it like 70% of the people actually don't have any serious affiliation with the gangs at all? Like, I get it. MS-13, narco-violence, like, this is stuff that is um, horrific. Like, unimaginable cruelty. It's born out of unimaginable poverty, for the most part. It is wild to consider that this is, like, common practice, and also people are... People are going along with it. Notice how there's money in the bank to make the CCOT prison? And facilities and to hire the fucking armed guards but there isn't money in the bank for regular processing hiring public defenders you know any of the other due process stuff no money to tackle the underlying reasons as to why people join fucking uh gangs and shit criticize seacott harshly experts cast doubt if the clampdown can solve the country's problems long term Containing people is a fairly good temporary solution. It's something that can happen fairly quickly with not a ton of money. And it's, it's an investment to really expand rehabilitation programs and to look at preventative strategies. Ashley Battistini is a professor at Swinburne University of Technology in Melbourne. She works primarily on new intervention strategies for high-risk populations. According to her, CCOT only treats the symptoms of violence. Sooner or later, the violence could return in the same way, or worse. If you treat people like trash, you're, you're really here in return. People are not motivated to change when they are treated poorly and when they're not given opportunities to, to grow and develop. And so even though, again, it's doing what it's intended to do by containing this behavior, pulling these individuals off the streets, and you're seeing reductions in crime as a result of it in the long term, it's really not going to be of benefit to society um, or to these individuals to simply contain them without any goal goal of changing what is keeping them in that criminal lifestyle. But how should gang violence be combated? It's also going to need thought around preventative strategies and policy changes that, again, are causing people to go down this pathway in the first place. So, you know, it's worth taking a look at what's going in on in, in communities, with the economy, you know, what is it that is driving people to enter these gangs and to keep these gangs so active and involved in the first place? According to Socorro Juridico Humanitario, almost one third of all prisoners in El Salvador are most likely innocent. Many were imprisoned based on a mass trial in front of a masked judge after they were arrested without a warrant. 
The government is aware that thousands of innocent people are in prison. The government claims that 8,000 people have already been released. About twice as many innocent people are likely still detained. Police had explicit orders to make arrests, no matter who they were really arresting. Porque hemos metido gente eh, sin ningún, sin haber cometido ningún delito, sino que hay muchos casos solo por el simple hecho de ser jóvenes. Las patrullas tenían que detener cierta cantidad de gente diaria para que la, la, la suma de detenidos fuera aumentando. ¿va? Y así decir de que si no deteníamos a 20 personas, no podíamos regresar a la base. O sea, y ahí fue que, que allí agarramos a cualquiera. Dude, you build a fucking multi-million dollar new prison facility, you gotta fill it up somehow. You know what I mean? You can't just like let it <clears throat> stay open and empty. That's a waste of resources. Poverty is a big factor that drives people into the arms of the gangs. During Bukele's last term of office, extreme poverty in El Salvador. I understand that Bukele's methods weren't good and these prisons are human rights abuse, but you're talking about a weak Central American economy completely compromised by gang violence. Yeah, dude, the only difference between Bukele's methods and gang violence is that Bukele is doing it and saying that they're doing it as like the government. That's it. I don't think people understand that because we have no way of like looking at police as a gang. We have no way of looking at the army as a gang, but functionally the way that they're operating is unironically the exact same. They just have more resources. Like we're talking about a mass torture prison where one third of, of the apprehended are literally innocent, like directly innocent. The rest of it probably have loose gang affiliations uh, and, and not necessarily like full blown criminals. None of which deserves the 24 uh, seven torture that they're experiencing regardless. A lot of people don't understand that like all Bukele has done is basically substitute that violence uh, and, and took it away from like the decentralized gangs, which were incredibly violent for the record. I'm not saying they weren't. They're fucking unimaginably brutal. But like they substitute that and, and basically legalize it, which is even scarier because like... At the end of the day, there's supposed to be some kind of salvation from the government against the gang violence. But what happens when the government becomes the gang? Nothing. You have nothing then. You have no recourse. You have literally nothing you can do. Think about it conceptually. Nabbing a 15-year-old? Like, regardless of their crimes and just fucking locking them in perma jail, perma torture for 15 years. That was insane. Salvador has doubled. At the same time, poor people were particularly affected by the wave of arrests. They are often unable to afford legal assistance. Nonetheless, many people of El Salvador view all of this as an incredible success story for Bukele. Over 70,000 arrests since the beginning of the state of emergency, opening the largest prison in the world, a historically low murder rate. According to the government, just under 500 murders in 2022 and only 154 murders in 2023. El Salvador went from- Yeah, there's suspicion that they're also refusing to log the consistent murders as well. Like, there are still murders happening, and they're just not logging them. It's simply a missing person. From one of the most violent countries in the world to one of the safest in Latin America. So Bukele was re-elected as president in February of this year by a huge margin. The constitution did not actually allow him to be re-elected, so he had it changed. Just one of many erosions of El Salvador's democracy. Already in 2020, he had marched into parliament with armed soldiers to influence a vote. Freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, and freedom of the press have been restricted for over two consecutive years now. While reading up on this topic, we found this quote in The Guardian. Bukele is highly undemocratic, highly abusive, and highly popular. For some, it's hard to accept that these three things can coexist. Bukele jokingly called himself the world's coolest dictator on Twitter a few years back. Doesn't seem so funny now.
it's crazy to see a Palestinian man who was originally like woke and seemingly a leftist turn into this fucking freak. A real, I don't know. What is this? Japan in the 1960s was insane. 